This is the Super Sports Schools Podcast, bringing you stories of our future stars powered by Spurs Steak Ranchers. One, two, three, Shante, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of the Super Sports Schools podcast. Just to start off, could you please introduce yourself? Um, hi, my name is Shante. I am 18 years old. I go to Parktown High School for Girls and I am a South African gymnast and I train at JGC Gymnastics. Uh, it's, 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 it's so cool to be chatting to another gymnast. Earlier this year, we spoke to Caitlin Roeskrantz, who we know went off to uh, the Olympics. And gymnastics really has been growing in South Africa. So I'm so excited to talk to you today. But I, I, I want to get a sense of where gymnastics started for you and how you got into the sport. So I started gymnastics when I was three years old, um, just for fun. And then at my crash, and then when I was six, I moved to JGC and I was doing it for a low level for a while. And then, and then I started high performance when I was 11. And you say you started it when you were three years old. So obviously almost too early for you to really be thinking much about it. But when did you sort of realize that this was something that you wanted to take further and that was something you enjoyed? Um, I actually realized quite late. A lot of the time I was just going with the wind. My parents would just be like, go to training and be like, okay. Um, until my coaches were like, actually, she's really good. She should really focus on this more. And I did. And I'd say when I was, I don't remember what grade. When I was in grade four, I went to America and that was when I was like, oh, this could be a serious thing. And here I am today. Wow. So grade four went off to the United States, a country that is so successful uh, in gymnastics at an Olympic and world champs level. Did you have heroes growing up? Anybody that you looked up to or even still look up to today? It was mainly just Simone Biles because she was probably, still is one of the biggest gymnasts. But now it's stiff, that list, the list has definitely grown. I would say Caitlin Rosegratz is definitely one of my biggest inspirations. Um, Rebecca Andrade from Brazil. And right now those two, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, amazing. And we're going to talk about both of them because obviously Caitlin being South African, somebody that we've interviewed on the show before. And I think if anybody didn't know much about gymnastics before the Olympic Games we've just had in Paris, if they, if they really didn't know anything, they'll know the name Simone Biles now. Even if you've never watched gymnastics before, that is a name that's been coming up during these Olympics games. She's Olympic Games. She's won seven gold medals, 11 medals in total at the Olympics. She is definitely one of the greatest gymnasts of all time. And I think since you are a gymnast, maybe for people who don't necessarily watch gymnastics as much, just to explain how complex and how difficult the things are that she does, because a lot of the time people see uh, people might be watching gymnastics without much experience and they see that somebody does this really complex routine and then the landing, maybe they take a step. But just to explain that there is so much power, so much force involved and what she does is just so technically difficult. So to maybe help explain to people. Um, so she does some really crazy skills. So how it works in gymnastics is that the skills have like a difficulty rating for A being the easiest and then like G or something. And a lot of, I'm not quite sure what her difficulties are on each app, but it's really high. She's okay. created some of her own skills. Um, I think one on each app, I'm not sure about bar though, but 
Yeah, it's insane. It's some of her gymnastics men can't even do. I mean, might beg to differ, but yeah, it's insane. Uh, absolutely. And and you just need to watch her routines from the Olympic Games to see how incredible it is. And you talk about apps there. I think, thankfully, that I've interviewed Caitlin earlier this year. I know you're referring to the different apparatus that you use in gymnastics. Uh, so she obviously competes in, in all sorts and uh, you can do different ones and mix them up and, and, and all the rest. But for you, do you have a favorite apparatus? Uh, is that something from a young age or do you kind of just like all of them? How does that work for you as a gymnast? My favorite app is Beam. But I think that's because I've always been good at it and it's just always been the easiest. Sometimes I battle with like bar, vault and floor. Although floor is probably my second favorite because it's more dancey and fun and artistic. But beam is probably one of the hardest apparatuses. But I don't know. I just feel the most confident when I'm on beam. And if we talk about Beam, coming back to Simone Viles, uh, she does that. Uh, you're going to have to help me out with the name here, but I've, I've also seen you do it sort of the one leg stuck out and you pivot on your one foot and you and you spin in a circle. Uh, oh, circle. the uh, Yes, the wolf turn. Uh, that, just to me, to, to, to see that is so impressive. Uh, I mean, do you have favorite skills for, for the Beam, if the Beam is your favorite app? Um, side aerial, I think. I think my favorite skill, though, of all time is probably Kachif, which is on bar, though. And to explain that to, to, to someone who has, like me, who has no idea what all the moves are called, but can just still watch gymnastics and appreciate how incredible it is. Okay, it's a bit hard to explain, not really. But um, you, like, swing around the bar. And then when you're supposed to go over, like instead of just going normal swing around the bar, you'll let go and like, sorry, I'm just trying to imagine this. So you'll let go and like bring your legs around you and go through to catch the bar. I don't know if I'm making sense. No, but I think that's a good effort at explaining it. I, I don't think, uh, I certainly could not have done better. And I, I, I think what does come across is that it's, it sounds cool. It sounds exciting, which all the things uh, in, in gymnastics usually do. You just, you just have to watch some gymnastics to see how, how special it is. Uh, but cool, we've spoken about then Simone Biles as one of your, your early inspirations, and she's continued to be amazing and inspired people around the world, especially during these uh, Olympic Games. But then to talk about Caitlin, um, I hear that that you actually train at the same the same gym. Yes, I do. And is 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 that is that cool to see? I mean, I don't know how much training together there is, inspiring each other, talking to each other, communicating. Maybe to just tell us a little bit about that. Um, it's definitely a great experience. I see her. Well, I don't see her as much now, because. I have school, she had the Olympics, um, but she's been really like an inspiration. She's to see someone go so far and achieve such great things and still be able to bring herself down to like my level, not that we're far off, but like, and still be able to be encouraging and help others. Like she's just amazing. That's all I can say. Mm, it, that, that's great. And I love that you say, uh, not that we're far off, because you yourself have been to a Commonwealth Games. You have competed at a very high level as well. So talk to me about when you sort of first thought that going to these competitions, representing your country, could be a possibility. Um, so I traveling for gymnastics for a while but for some reason it just it's just something that I always did it never really clicked in my head until the Commonwealth Games because that was quite literally the biggest competition I'd 
ever done in my life. And it was the first time I was competing on a podium. And it was the first time I was competing in such like a huge crowd. And one of the things I remember was when I got my suitcase with my South African kit. And then that's when I was like, oh, snap, I'm really doing this. I'm really wearing my South African colors. Like it says South Africa on my tracksuit. So. And you just want to put that tracksuit on and pretty much sleep in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically literally everything from the South African socks to the jacket. I felt I was really proud of that moment. Oh, that's amazing. And, um, and, and then when you're there with the crowd that you say is bigger, it's different. How does that impact the competing? Are you more excited to compete? Does it add some nerves to it? What's, what's sort of the all round effect? Yes, definitely. I think it's better because, well, I, it's a lot funner to compete when people are cheering you on, like lots of people. Also, the crowd doesn't necessarily know what's going on. So they just cheer at everything, which is also really fun because it's like you fall, they cheer, you land, they cheer, and it's just a great time. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome if you can have a crowd that's just constantly positive. And I think sometimes because gymnastics can be really technical, like we can all appreciate, wow, that was incredible. Wow, she landed that really well. But sometimes it's those really technical things. Well, that was actually quite a difficult thing. It might not look as difficult, but to do it, if we tried to do it, we'd realize how difficult it is. So if the crowd's just always positive and enthusiastic, uh, then, then, that's, then that's fantastic. Um, so Commonwealth Games 2022 is when that was. You were obviously there with Team South Africa. And what's that like being a part of a group of people across sports who are going to compete at the highest level and represent the country. Talk to me a bit about some of that camaraderie, et cetera. It was really fun. I mean, I got to meet some amazing athletes like Chad Leclerc and I think it's Tatiana Smith now. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, and it was just really inspiring to be in the presence of such big names and you just get to see that they're normal people too like they're so normal it's crazy because you think they've achieved so much and everyone here is they all have one goal which is to just do their best i guess and just to see that they're normal people was really fun <laughs> Well, I think there's another set of people that are looking at Shante Koti, who's gone to the Commonwealth Games and says, well, she's normal too. She's still at school and she's actually studying as well. So how do you, how do you balance it? Competing at the highest level, all this traveling, training and school. Um, a lot of it comes from support from school, family, my coaches. Um, they're all really supportive and they help me where I can, where they can. On my side, in terms of balancing school and gym, it's when it's school time, I really focus on school. And when it's gym time, I really focus on gym. So that helps quite a bit. And any free time I have, I'll probably be doing schoolwork because I miss so much traveling. Well, then at least that will help make it a little bit easier. But then talking about the gym side of things, obviously gymnasts are incredible athletes, super strong, super fit. What goes into a normal training week to make sure that you are able to do all these crazy skills and moves that you do across four apparatuses throughout the year? Okay, so generally in the beginning of, the training session is like prehab so that we won't get injured or to help with any current injuries. And then we have um, conditioning to strengthen the muscles and then we stretch out. And then on a Monday is basics because Sundays were off. So on a Monday is like basics, but it's small pieces of our routines or like, fitness training 
on the different apparatuses. And then Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, that's when we do routine work. And that's generally when we'll do like maybe three in a row five. And, but this is mostly in competition season. So we really focus on routines on those days. And then maybe Wednesday and Friday, a bit of new skills and just routine cleanup. But maybe instead of doing full routines, we'll just do quarters, things like that. And then we train for about four to four and a half hours every day except Sunday. Wow. So it, it's properly intense. And I guess it has to be if you look are looking to compete at the highest level. And t talking about that, what would you say has been your highlight of competing uh, in, in, this, in these 18 years of life? I mean, you've been going since you were three years old, but what would you say is your highlight? Um, from, I'll probably say the traveling. I have gained a lot of experiences and gotten the chance to experience a lot of different cultures, which many people don't get to do and to have traveled to at least 10 countries, I think so far, I think has really just helped in my experience of life. That's awesome. And I, I don't know if you necessarily realize, but you spoke about Simone Biles and Caitlin Roeskrantz being your inspirations and people you look up to and, and in Caitlin's case, somebody you also train with. You are now also an inspiration for the next generation of gymnasts in South Africa. And we've had gymnasts this year go to the Olympics uh, after a period of time where we didn't have, and there haven't been many South African gymnasts at the Olympic Games, but now that we do have, it means that gymnastics in South Africa is going in the right direction. So what would you say to young people in South Africa, specifically young girls who might be like you? They are, they've been gymnasts since, doing gym since they were three years old. Maybe they're starting uh, junior school, starting high school, and other things are kind of taking up more, more time. So they're maybe not going to continue with it. What would you say with people to, to motivate them to continue and to take up gymnastics? I'll probably say just keep going, keep showing up for training sessions because it, it really does get hard. Like some, I've thought about quitting so many times, it's crazy, but I still showed up and it's on those hard days where you really make yourself the best and that really builds your career and your experiences. So keep showing up, keep doing what you're doing and also have fun, like it's a fun sport. Yes, it's hard, but it's fun. Bringing you the sport you care about the most, this is the Super Sports Schools Podcast. Fifteen delicious breakfasts spur is the place to be until eleven every morning. Enjoy an unreal breakfast for just fifty six ninety. Spur people with a taste for life. Wake up now. Bringing you the sport you care about the most. This is the Super Sports Schools podcast. Let's let's talk then a little bit about your journey, your career, and where you'd like to go in the next couple of years goals that you might have set yourself, what, what, what do you think? So right now, a uh, short-term goal about would be 2026 Commonwealth Games. And then after that, my biggest goal is probably 2028 Olympics. Absolutely. And I, I think I'm not surprised that those are your goals. Uh, some people might say that they're ambitious, but you've already been to the Commonwealth Games. You're training with someone who's gone to the Olympics. You, you know what it takes to get there. So I think those are definitely achievable goals. And after school, are you looking to, to do gymnastics full time? Are you looking to study? What's that balance going to be like after school? Um, so I'm looking to study after school, but I am taking a gap year next year just to 
focus on gym, relax a bit. It's really taxing on your body and like your mind to be having to do school and gym for literally every day of my life. So I would like a little bit of a break. Um, in terms of doing it full time, I suppose it's a hard sport to do full time because your career is not that long. Like most gymnasts generally quit when they're like, it used to be 18, but now it's definitely becoming later and later. So we'll probably be done by like 22. Well, yeah. So I'll probably have to get a career. Well, I will have to get a career. Okay, no, it, it, it makes sense. And I like that you're taking the gap here, but you still intend on studying afterwards. Uh, you, you're setting those realistic goals and, and know what you need to do to get there. So that's, that's also great. Something I didn't ask you earlier, but I think it sort of ties into this and your progression going forwards. Are there any skills that you've never done that you would, would love to do? What's one that sort of stands out, if there is one? Um, well, so my friends and I have this thing that before we quit, there's one skill that we have to do before we can leave. And for me, that's probably um, layout touch up which is, do I need to explain that? Is it different? It's not the same thing as you explained earlier, hey? It's a, is it a different one? It's not the same. So the one I explained is a straddle cut shift, which is where you straddle and come through your legs and catch the bar. But with the layout, you keep your feet together. And like, if this is the bar, you come over the bar straight before you catch. Uh, that's that's cool. There's there's another goal in there, and hopefully that is something that that gets done. Um, but yeah, thanks also for the for the sort of diagrams with the arms and explaining for us. That, that helps a lot because it, I know it can get complicated with the different apparatus and 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 all the rest to to try and explain it and for to come across to people who also might not be familiar with the the different apparatus. The last thing I want to ask you before we go to the quiz, you. You spoke earlier about how your sort of second favorite apparatus was was floor um, because it's artistic and you get to express yourself uh, like that. And maybe for people who, who aren't aware, obviously the floor does have skills. Uh, there's you, you're jumping and flipping and all sorts, but they're also sort of slower artistic expression movements, etc. So so maybe just to to explain to people why the floor is maybe quite different to the other parts or the upper, the other apparatus and why you like it so much? Um, so Thor, you, first of all, there's music. So you get to dance to music. And like I mentioned, it was quite artistic. So you get points for your facial expressions, your body movements. And then there's also leaps, jumps and turns, which are like, the splits and the turns and all the pretty things, which I think really adds to the floor. Although everything in gymnastics is pretty, I guess. Um, and it's just, it's fun. It's like a two seconds, no, not two seconds, a minute and a half where you get to really show the judges and the crowd who you are. Also, it can be very personalized because you can choose your own music and yeah, it's just really fun. The whole process is fun. And competing it is fun. For you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and for you, choosing that music, how does that come about? Is that a coach? Is that you? Do you have some personal input in that? So I normally, like if I hear the owl and I like it, then that'll be that. But my coach does have to approve of it first. For example, the current floor music that I have is, I think, All For Us from Euphoria, or Wild by Libran, something like that. Um, and I heard it on TikTok, actually, because it was a time when Euphoria was trending and things like that. And I heard the music and I'm like, oh my gosh, it would be so cool if it was an instrumental. 
then I went and found an instrumental on YouTube and then I cut the music myself and showed it to my coach and she was like, it's great, let's do it. And we did it. Oh, that's so cool. I love, I love that. That's something that 10 years ago is never going to happen. It's so cool that it's come from TikTok. Coach is like, cool, go with it. And have you used that music at, at competition level as well? Yep, I do. Oh, that's, that's like, cool. That's, last, that's cool. last routine was Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Uh, and and do you think is it something that you update? How how regularly do you change your music for floor? About every two years. Okay, so it is something that you get to know in and out and become familiar with for two years before it changes, and you really get to know the music then. Yeah, because it, it can also get boring dancing to the same floor routine for so long. So it just adds to the experience. Yeah, and that's something I've actually wondered. Like all the, all the routines, you do them over and over and over, but there is the, the trade-off between it becoming boring and you becoming really good at it. So at what point do you si decide, okay, something new is, is, it's time for something new? Um, well, what we do quite often is upgrading skills. So I'll use the wolf turn, for example. So maybe we'll compete a full for a month or two, well, longer than that. And then we'll try in practice, we'll try to go one and a half, then double, then triple. And that's generally how we upgrade most of our skills. And then at the end of competition season, that's when we really try like completely new skills. Like for example, on beam, I'm, working on front aerial. That's one of the things I want to put into my routine and a couple of other things, but I've never done that. So right now is the time for me to work on it and put it into my routine. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for going into detail there on the floor. Uh, we got to explore that a little bit. It's now time though, to end off with our super sports schools podcast quiz. The highest score of the season so far is eight. You get 60 seconds to answer as many questions correctly as you can. If you don't know an answer, just say pass. Obviously, our interview is online, so there is a little bit of a delay. So the average usually for these sorts of interviews is around four or five. Um, but we've thrown in quite a few Olympics and gymnastics questions for you. How, how are you feeling ahead of the quiz? Um, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. People are probably going to laugh at me because I actually know nothing about sport, but it's fine. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I would say that sport is the one thing that definitely will come up, unfortunately. Um, but okay, uh, you've got you've got 60 seconds on the clock. Are you ready to play? Yeah. All right, 60 seconds and your time starts now. Which nation won the gold medal for the Olympic artistic gymnastics team all round? The USA. That's correct. Who won Botswana's first Olympic gold medal and is also the current men's 300 meter world record holder? Pass. It's Letzile Tabojo. Name any of the countries that compete in the rugby championship. South Africa. That's correct. True or false, South Africa has won a silver gymnastics medal in the Olympics. False. That's correct. Uh, how many Olympic medals has Simone Biles won in total? 11. That's correct. True or false? In hockey, there is no offside rule for open play. Uh, true. That's correct. Who won the 2024 Paul Derby? Was it Paul Boys or Paul Chem? Paul Chem? I don't know. Uh, yes, 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 I'll, I'll accept. <laughs> It sounds, sounded close enough. I'm just going to add up your score and it is six, which is actually a fantastic performance, especially considering we're online and have to deal with the delay. So well done. I think you can give yourself a round of applause for that. Congratulations. That was, that was fantastic. For someone who said they know nothing about sports, you flew through that. <laughs> yeah, I did better than I thought I was going to do. <laughs>
Shantae, thanks so much for joining me for the Super Sports Schools podcast. It's been great chatting to you and all the best for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for having me and giving me this opportunity. This has been the Super Sports Schools podcast, bringing you stories of our future stars, powered by Spurs Steak Ranchers.